So how's it going everyone? Today I have some pretty exciting news to share, if you haven't heard about it already. But well, recently, Ninja Kiwi just released a Balloon CD Battles 2 video, not a trailer. They actually made one about two months ago that I didn't cover on this channel, but I'll leave a link to the description in case you're curious. Not gonna analyze that one, but instead we're going to go over the new video they just released, talking about arenas. How the arena slash rank system works in this game. So this is gonna be a three minute video. Now I have watched this video already many times, but I'm gonna go over it again so that I can explain, well, my thoughts on it while we analyze each feature that is shown. So starting here at 27 seconds, I believe they talk about medallions. Let's play. We've stripped medallions out of the game in favor of a competitive progression system based on trophies, which will be earned and lost when you win or lose a match. And trophy count is what will be used for player matchmaking. So let's hold up right there. So basically they got rid of medallions completely and instead, Trophies are how they determine matchmaking. Sounds like a pretty simple system to start you off. Just gain one if you win, one if you lose. Although, I think later on they talk about uh, gaining more if you go on a win streak. But what they don't discuss is the other things that you get. It looks like 25 monkey money and 3 of this pop badge. Not sure what it corresponds to, but I assume monkey money you could use to, like, maybe buy skins or something like that. And there's also a bonus to one of those things if you get no lives lost or first blood. First blood meaning who leaks the first life. Anyways, let's keep listening. These new trophies will also be how you progress through the arenas. Once you hit a certain number of trophies, you move on to the next arena. But be careful, as you can drop back if you fall below the trophy threshold. Each win So yeah, let's pause there. From this it sounds like there's only one matchmaking queue. What I mean by that is like, you can't choose between Yellow Stadium or Ceramic Crucible. If you have the trophy amount required for Ceramic Crucible, It'll just throw you in there, cause otherwise people would just go to the easiest arena to, well, farm trophies easier. Cause it sounds like you get one trophy for every win, regardless of what stadium you're playing in. At least that's what I'm getting, so if you go back a little bit, it looks like Yellow Stadium requires 21 trophies. Uh, White Wasteland 30, Lead Dungeon 40, Crucible 50, and doesn't show the rest, but yeah, that's all we know for now. Each win in a ranked game will earn you one trophy, and you'll receive an additional trophy if you're on a win streak of three games or more. And there it is. Two trophies if you get on a win streak of three or more. Moving up into a new arena will also award you one extra trophy, and losing a match will result in a loss of one trophy. Ah, wait, pause here. So we can't see exactly what we earn from getting those uh, end of game bonuses. So like, if you're on a win streak, I believe it went up in the uh, dart badge amounts. Like, just watch here. Yeah, you get one of those for No Lives Lost. And First Blood, I think you get both Monkey Money and the badge. And there we go. And then another trophy for Win Streak. And if you look closely, it's very briefly shown. But there's a couple other icons you gain. 385 Gwen Points. I'm not sure what this is for. Might be for Hero Skins. I believe they reveal that later on. But that's just my guess. Anyways, moving on. I think there's more to be said about the matchmaking system. And perhaps most importantly for the game's skill-based matchmaking system, winning games or arena promotions are the only ways to earn trophies. They cannot be purchased. Perfect. So not a pay-to-win game. None of those uh, janky powers that you can spend real money for in BTD Battles 1. It essentially looks like it's going to be a, a pure skill game, which I like the sound of that. Things do start to change, however, when you hit 100 or more trophies and enter the elusive Hall of Masters, where your trophy count will be hidden and matchmaking will be done using a dynamic elo ladder system. And this is where you'll join the leaderboard and battle it out to be number one and earn those sweet, sweet badges. Now this is what I want to hear, guys. This is what a lot of people have been wanting in BT Battles 1, an elo-based uh, matchmaking system. And it looks like we're gonna get exactly that. Now, I have seen a lot of people comment that this is uh, a very similar system to what Cr Clash Royale does. I haven't played Clash Royale before, but y'all can verify if that is correct, that comparison is correct. But either way, it must be a good system if you're taking uh, inspiration from it. So let's actually go back to uh, this page here. I believe there's some text that we can read. So the Hall of Masters is when you get 100 trophies, and then you can start the skill-based matchmaking instead of the additive trophy system. So you're now competing with the best and aiming to be crowned the true champion of the season. There are no trophies in the Hall of Masters. Winning games moves you up the leaderboard. Losing them moves you down. Your opponent's rank determines how much the result will affect your position. And how high can you go before the season ends? Which I believe is 6 weeks. You'll hear it later if it wasn't said already. 
And leader replacement requires three rank games to determine your starting rank. Three is actually very little, very small sample size, but I guess it doesn't really matter that much. If you play enough, eventually get to where your uh, true ranking is. And that's the cool thing about, well, skill-based matchmaking. Definitely beats the prestige leaderboards that they've had uh, in Battles 1, where that was mostly based on how much you play the game. Now, obviously, you still have to play a fair amount if you want to get the top leaderboard, but I'm just glad it's not about, you know, playing 12 hours a day. Those sweet, sweet badges. Each season is planned to last six weeks. Yep, so the there it is. You receive a badge based on the highest arena you achieved or where you placed on the Hall of Masters leaderboard. So we've talked a little bit about how you're matched with other players and how you progress through the arenas, but let's talk a bit more about how you're going to do that. Each player's loadout will consist... Alright, so that's it for the uh, arenas. Now we go over to gameplay, and you see here, Hero Skins. Again, I think you need to purchase these with either Monkey Money or maybe the uh, Hero Points that you get from winning games. And just like Battles 1, you got 30 seconds to pick, and you can skip the map. The one hero and three other towers of their choosing. And similar to Battles 1, you get three monkeys, although of course, you get the new hero edition as well. So basically one hero and three towers. No fourth tower, which is good. In game, you'll only have access to the standard balloon boost and tower boost powers from Battles 1, of which each player will have three uses. Balloon sends have also been overhauled to a more user-friendly and intuitive system. Unlike Battles 1, where all balloon sends remained available throughout a game once they were unlocked, ah, the balloons you can send this now is change as the game progresses. So let's pause here again. I guess they didn't have enough space to put in so many balloon sends, so instead, there's just one balloon send for each type of balloon. So no more, like, grouped whites and space whites separately. Basically, after a certain round, I guess a spaced balloon send turns to a group balloon send. We can see the pink here, so watch carefully. Before it's three spaced pinks, you gain 1.8 income for $28. And I believe afterwards it changes to four grouped pinks, only two income for 65 bucks. so very inefficient. Which is kind of weird, because I, I don't expect group pinks to kill anyone. So I feel like that should be like an, an eco send. Also, speaking of eco, you can see, you can do the ratio of all the eco sends here. It looks to me that the space blacks are the most efficient. Three of them for three income and 30 bucks pays off in basically one minute. Anyways, let's uh, keep going. So early game rushes will be replaced with eco builders, mid game finishers, and uh, big more. More balloon sends. Let's analyze the efficiency real quick. Yeah, for some reason it seems like the group sends are just way worse in, in eco. You can do three group DTs for 6k, which is pretty cheap, but you lose 600 income it looks like. And with the BFB, it's 2.5k, only 50 loss. That doesn't sound so bad. Zoom G, it looks like 200, minus 200. It's kind of hard to see, because how tiny the font is. I believe bad is also the same, minus 600. 15k. Thanks. Camo, regen, and fortified modifiers will also be available to beef up those balloon rushes. Yep, Finally, standard. Matches and battles too will be capped at 40 rounds. If neither oh, hold up here. Now, this is pretty important. Apparently, there's no such thing as epic late game anymore, as in, like, you can't... Wait to see how long you can survive for the highest round. In case you can't see, well, it just stops at 40. There's more info, so let me just keep playing it. Players won by that point, the player with the most lives will win. If the game is tied, both King players will be reduced to one life and sudden death will commence for 10 rounds. At round 50, all eco will be set to zero and cannot be increased above that. All cash collectibles, money banks, etc. will be auto-collected and then disabled, and the only way to get more money will be to sell towers in an attempt to land that killer blow. Interesting. After all of the natural round 50 balloons have spawned, the game continues until one player loses or there's no balloons left on screen, in which case the game will be declared a draw. So that was a lot of info right there, so let me go back real quick. So from what I get here, it's similar to King of the Hill rules. In case you don't know what King of the Hill is, uh, it was a user-created leaderboard system. Because, well, Battles 1 didn't have a good one. And how they rank games was, they set an end round where lives matter. So whoever has more lives, if the game drags on long enough, they win. If not, it's a draw. Although it seems like in this case, it keeps dragging on if it's still a tie. So it turns sudden death at round 40. But I don't think whatever else Sam said afterwards applies on round 40. I believe he said at round 50. So basically on round 40, both players just get one life. But it's so late in the game that I feel like even if you have full lives, you're basically playing with one life anyways. Because you're most likely, if you're going to leak, it's highly unlikely you're going to leak only a little bit of lives. So with that said, it sounds like round 50 is the actual last round. 
Because it sounds like round 50 has to be pretty long, otherwise, you know, no one's gonna make much use of the, uh, the cap in money. Because I feel like that would be actually a good feature to add starting at round 40. But either way, no way to know until we actually play the game. So I'm gonna leave my thoughts at that. Let's keep watching for the end here. So there you have it. These are the rules of the arena for Battles 2 and we hope this has got you just as excited as we are to get the game in your hands. If you enjoyed this video, then please support it with a like, subscribe... And yeah, that is the 3 minute trailer for Battles 2. Lots of new info to soak in. And yeah, it sounds like from the looks of this, there is no round past round 50, so... Rip to all those casual players who, I guess, would prefer to play some late game, or maybe more casual play. It sounds like, if you go all the way back to the main menu screen, it doesn't sound like there's another, uh, casual game mode. Like Bonanza. I think they confirmed that there's not going to be any of those game modes when the game releases. But of course they may plan on doing, uh, adding that, afterwards. Seems like to me everyone plays under the same rule for for now. Which kind of leads me to wonder how useful those endgame towers going to be, like True Sun God, Legend of Night. Are we even going to be able to afford that in 50 rounds? But yeah, I think that's all I have to say regarding this little update video. Super excited for the release. Again, if you haven't heard, it's slated for the end of 2021. Let's hope they don't delay it. Because this will be a very nice Christmas gift for us all. If you want to keep up to date on more Battles 2 updates, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Or subscribe to Ninja Kiwi's channel, because they're probably going to be uploading this before I get a chance to, well, react. But yeah, I'll leave it out there. If you have any comments about what you see here that I may have missed, or anything else in general, feel free to leave a comment. And I'll see you guys next time.